Hey guys, Tom here again from SerumPresets.com and in this Serum tutorial we're going to be looking at a Michael Cassette style app lead. Um, it's kind of got that really nice vintage sound. Um, if you've never listened to Michael Cassette before, um, it doesn't really matter, but he's um, an Anjuna artist. Um, he, his genre is somewhere between progressive house and um, trance and it's got this really like 80s or like vintage feel to his music um, and really that's what came to mind when I created this preset. So I'll just quickly demonstrate um, demonstrate what it actually sounds like. So hopefully you like that sound, um, I really like it, I don't know what it is specifically within the sound that makes it sound so 80s or like retro, I think it, it's mostly due to, due to um, this wavetable here, um, but it's a really really cool sound and um, as you can see here this is Pluck 28, this is actually Pluck 28 um, from my uh, Trance preset pack for Serum. Um, and if you are into these kind of sounds, these trancey sounds, even if you don't specifically produce trance but want a nice collection of 256 presets um, for Serum, um, head over to serumpresets.com. There's a full audio demo of the preset pack on there, um, along with a full description of everything included. Um, there's, you can also click the link in the description and that'll take you straight to the preset pack page as well. Um, but And yeah, thanks for, thanks for um, purchasing that um, in advance if you decide to uh, um, get that. So, um, without further ado, though, let's initialize this um, preset here and begin making this sound from scratch. So, um, I'm just going to start off in Oscillator B just to keep it consistent with the preset that I showed you. Um, and the first wavetable we're going to use is the Dull Toy um, wavetable. Um, and we're just going to move the wavetable position to about, let's say, about here, something like that. Um, so as you can see, it's kind of got a similar shape to just a normal sine wave, but it's got all of these ridges, which kind of gives it um, a much harsher characteristic than just a, a sine wave. Um, and it, that's this is really what's giving it the kind of main sound, that kind of retro sound, which I'll just demonstrate for you here. Um, let me just set the envelope and give it a little bit of release. I might have to turn the volume down as well. So that's just the wavetable on its own. Obviously, we're going to do a lot more to the sound, but um, yeah, it's just got a really nice kind of um, characteristic to it. It's hard to put into words, really. Um, but as you can see there, I also increased the unison amount to seven and brought the detune down a little bit. Um, unison is essentially the amount of voices that the oscillator is outputting, um, and that um, because each voice is then detuned from one another, it makes the sound sound much thicker, um, and we perceive it to be a much bigger sound. Um, and I'm actually going to do the same for oscillator to A and we're going to use another digital wavetable for this, we're going to use this hyper wavetable um, which is like a hyper saw, it's, it looks like a saw wave but it's also kind of rounded so it's got a little bit more body to it than a normal saw wave and this is essentially just going to, um, it's, if, if we listen to the OS, OSB on its own It's good, but it feels like it's missing something, and once we add OSC A into the mix with a Hypersaw... I'm just going to turn the level down a bit. It just fills out some of those um, high frequencies, which is really nice. Um, I also, um, as you can see here, set up the um, amplitude envelope. Envelope 1 within Serum, by default, is the amplitude envelope. Um, and we've just given it, because it's like quite an RP sound, um, we've given it quite a short um, decay, um, brought the sustain right down and just giving it about 300 or so milliseconds of release. Um, it will start sounding much more sharper and quicker once we start using um, envelopes to modulate the filter, which I think we can do now if we've done everything in the oscillators. Yeah, okay, so 
The filter we're going to use um, in the sound is one of the miscellaneous filters. We're going to use this French low pass. And what's really cool, we're actually going to use two filters in the sound, but before we um, route everything through a low pass filter in the effects section, we're just going to use this French low pass filter, which I really, really like. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is route both oscillator A and B through the filter. Um, we're going to bring the cutoff um, right down. And we're going to set up another uh, envelope here, but a much sharper envelope to um, modulate the um, the cutoff of the filter. I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of release as well, and drag and drop this onto the cutoff to modulate it. And now we have this. But there, you might wonder why you know why would you use two low pass filters? Um, and what's really great about having two filters within Serum is that you can um, add really interesting um, frequency content to the sound through um, one of these really cool miscellaneous filters like um, the German low pass or the reverb filter and stuff like that um, to then be rooted through a low pass filter rather than the sound just going through a low pass filter. Um, and for, for in this example, what we're going to do is use this. Um, I'm, I don't know how you pronounce this word. Is it like beef or something? I think it's French. Um, and this adds like a lot of warmth to the sound, which is really nice. And we're also just going to give it some drive as well. And the other thing we're going to do is bring the mix amount right down to about halfway. And I'm just going to bring the master volume down here a bit. <laughs> So if I just compare the sound um, with the filter and without, you'll hear that um, it adds a lot more interest to the sound. It adds some really, really nice, um, nice warmth to the sound. So with that in place, what we can then start doing is rooting the sound through the effects and finally through an actual um, low pass filter. So the first thing we're going to do is add this hyper dimension effect. Um, the dimension expander part of this effect isn't actually on by default because the mix is um, at 0% and we're not going to use that part of the effect. We're just going to use the um, hyper effect and what this is doing is using unison which is very similar to that of um, the use of unison in an oscillator but instead of just detuning the voices of a single oscillator this is um, creating unison for the sound as a whole and then detuning those voices so the it's kind of affecting the overall sound which you'll hear here just really helps to thicken the sound up. Um, the next thing we're going to do is add a filter but what we're going to do is we want the um, the sound to be filtered but then we want the we want delay and reverb on the sound as well but by default um, in Serum the filter effect is right at the end of the effects chain which means if we were to use this and apply delay and reverb most of the delay and filter would um, most of the delay and reverb would actually be filtered out but what's really really cool with inside Serum is that you can actually move the effects around in the chain so what we're going to do is put this um, right after the hyper dimension effect so that when we add reverb and delay it won't be filtered out. So we're going to use a um, Moog low pass 18 dB filter and we're going to drag and drop the same um, envelope we used for the um, the French low pass filter um, for this one. And what we're going to do is just move the modulation down here a bit. So that's sounding really, really nice already. Um, there's still some more effects to add though. We're going to add a delay and a reverb. Um, now, d this is where it becomes really kind of optional to you, um, whether you prefer to use these effects within Serum or you might have some effects in your whatever DAW you're using um, that you want to add um, afterwards as well. But I really like the delay and reverb within Serum. I think they sound really good, so we're just going to use these for this sound. What I'm going to do first of all in the delay is remove some of the low frequencies. Um, and I'm actually going to do the same for the reverb as well. Um, the reason for this is because if any low frequencies get passed through um, a, delay, a delay or a reverb, um, because it's reproducing those sounds, it makes the mix sound really muddy. Especially because this is an ARP sound that would probably be sat on top of a bass 
bass or a lead and a pad or something like that. Um, you really don't you want you want this to really keep out of the way of those other elements in your mix. So um, making sure to um, low pass a lot of the effects is is really really important. Um, so we're just going to listen to how this sounds. So I'm really, really happy with this so far. Um, another thing we're going to do is just add another EQ right to the end of the effects chain. Um, and this is going to EQ the whole sound. And what we're going to actually do here is just take out some of the lower frequencies. Because um, as I mentioned, um, with an app, you don't want the low frequency content of the sound um, kind of interfering with the rest of the mix. So really, you just have to kind of judge by ear where to EQ this. Obviously, you can EQ it outside of the actual sound itself, but EQing sounds within synths themselves is a really, really great practice to get into. Um, it, it, it's kind of like um, getting it right at the beginning um, really sa saves you a lot of headache later on when you're mixing. So if all of your sounds that um, are in your mix are already EQ'd within the synths themselves, um, it, this is going to save you a lot of mixing um, later on down the line. So this is a really great habit to get into. So let's listen to the overall sound now. So that pretty much concludes the sound. Um, there's a lot more you could do with this. You could play around with some more filter effects. Um, you could uh, maybe use a different wavetable for OSC A to add a little bit of extra texture to the sound. Um, you could add uh, implement a noise filter in here. Um, let's actually try that. Let's use um, a if this ever loads. Oh, wrong wrong folder. My bad. Um, so if we use a uh, let's go with an analog noise actually. A high pass chorus um, noise. So that's a really, really great way to fill out the sound as well. You could play around with um, different noise noise sources as well. Um, but yeah, that pretty much covers the sound. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Um, it's a really, really nice sound. I really like it. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you want to check out my trans preset pack again, there'll be a link in the description below to that. Um, you can click that or go to serumpresets.com and that's trans volume one, um, which has 256 presets in it that I think you'll find really useful, not only to use um, in your mixes and productions, but also to reverse engineer and kind of learn sound design and um, learn how really good quality sounds are made as well. So thanks a lot for watching guys, if you have any questions or um, suggestions for other sounds or um, genres you'd like me to explore, feel free to leave a comment down below, I do try and reply to everyone. Um, if you want to stay up to date with my um, latest videos as soon as they come out, um, feel free to subscribe and leave a like on the video to show your support as well if you found this video useful. So thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.